So I call us back to that place of intimacy with you, oh God. That there will be a depth, oh God. Welcome, welcome, Way Nation. If you're joining in on, on the line with us on this morning, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Sunday morning worship. You're in the midst of, a, a, of an encounter, an intimate encounter that we're having here in the sanctuary. So even now in your own home, just begin to lift him up and begin to let the climates even now descend in your homes that his presence will begin to fill your homes. So bring everyone to the TV. Send this link out. Invite people in to come to the service. If you're in the cow, make sure you get here. So even now, just join in and worship with us, lifting his name up, speaking your heavenly language, or whatever you got to do to get your home and get your climate set and join in with us. So we bless you, oh God. We give you glory, oh God. We honor you, Father. We lift you, oh God. We praise and bless your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We bless you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. So we let you in, oh God. We let you in, oh God. So we want more of you, oh God. We want more of you, Abba. We want more of you. We want more of you, Abba. We want more of you, O God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We let you in, O God. Whatever may be preventing us, oh God, from going deeper in you, whatever is holding us back, oh God, and, and having our relationship with you at a halt, on today we allow you to deal with it. On today we let our guards down. On today we let our walls down. Even the residue stench of our boxes, oh God, we give you the space to deal with it on today. Thank you, God. We let you in, oh God, to deal with our minds, deal with our hearts, oh God. To reframe our thinking, oh God, so that we can think as revolutionaries, so that we can see as revolutionaries, so that we can operate as revolutionaries, oh God. That we won't be double minded, oh God. That we won't be double ages, oh God. So come in, oh God. Reshape us, oh God. Reshape our mindsets, oh God. Reshape our hearts, oh God. Do the soul work that is needed and necessary, oh God. For us to be released as revolutionaries. So we give you that space, oh God. We give you that space, oh God. We give you that space, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. 
we give you that space, oh God. For you to change us, oh God. For you to renew us, oh God. That we won't be conformed to this world, oh God. That we won't be conformed to the system, oh God, that you want us to revolutionize. That we won't be conformed, oh God, to the system that you want us to revolutionize. That we will be set aside, that we will be put aside, oh God. That we will be consecrated for you, God. That we will be consecrated for you, oh God. To be your set ones, to be your representatives, oh God. Good morning, Way Nation. As you are in your places of worship, um, I want you to stay there really quickly. Just Stay in that place. If you're just joining us, welcome. But we're in a peculiar space on this morning, a peculiar moment on this morning where God is doing the work and our worship, where He's doing the work. As our hands are lifted. So we thank you, God, for doing the work on this morning. We lift our hands to you, Father. We lift our worship to you, Father. speak to you. Thank you. 
just as you're coming out of that moment of worship, I just want everybody to just begin to say thank you. Begin to speak well of him on this morning. Allow him to hear the fruit of your lips. the fruit of your lips on this morning. How awesome he is, how magnificent he is. God, you're great. God, you're holy. You're mighty. You're king. Mm. Yeah. Come on, look, give it a little more volume on this morning. your name. We exalt your name. We extol your name. Oh God, we give you glory on this morning. God, we thank you on this morning just for you being God. For you waking us up this morning, oh God. We thank you. God, we magnify your name. We magnify you because you're holy. We magnify you because you're awesome. We magnify you because you're worthy. So, Lord, we lift you up in this place. And as we lift you up, oh God, your glory will fall on us, oh God. As we lift you up, your glory will rain on us, oh God. As we lift you up, your spirit will come on us on this morning. Yeah. 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 Ooh, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, people of God. Just lift them up for a few more seconds. Hi. Yes, God, we praise you. I'm on the other boat shaking. God, we magnify your name. I'm the other boat shaking. Above everything that's going on, oh God, we magnify your name. Above all the things that are going on in our hearts and in our minds, oh God, we magnify your name. We glorify your name. We make you bigger than our situations, oh God. We make you bigger than our circumstances, oh God. We make you bigger than the things that are going on, oh God. We magnify you. We glorify you. We lift up praise to you. Everybody on the boat shake it. Yeah, lift up praises to him on this morning. Lift up praises to him on this morning. Lift up your praise to him on this morning. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus, we praise your name. Jesus, we praise your name. Jesus, we praise your name. We praise your name in this room. Hallelujah. To fill this room, let your praise begin to lift up this, let's fill this atmosphere.
yeah, come on, lift them. Come on, right here, lift them. Right here in this morning, lift them. How many you the most say, hey, some of us may have to clap our hands or stump our feet or, or wave our hands, whatever it is that you got to do. Begin to lift up your praises to him on this morning. Begin to lift up your praises to him on this morning. Begin to lift up your praise unto him, unto him on this morning. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, we focus on you. We center on you, oh God. We center on you, Father. We focus on your glory. We focus on what it is that you want to do on this morning. We place you at the center on today, oh God. Yes, God. Oh God, I might need a more sick it. Hey, my mama sick it. It is you that we focus on. It is you that we give our praises to. It is you that we lift up. It is you that we exalt. It is you that is placed in our hearts on this morning. So we lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, mighty King. We lift you up. We lift you up, mighty King. We lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, strong tower. We lift you up, oh God. We lift you up, mighty battle, mighty battle axe, oh God. We lift you up. We lift you up. We exalt you. We exalt you, oh God. We exalt you, Father. We may not sing a song, but God, we exalt you. We exalt you, God. We exalt you, King. We exalt you, Father. We exalt you, Mighty One. We exalt you. We exalt you, Yahweh. I'm on the other boat, say. Hey, ba 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 see. We declare that there's no other gods above you. That you are the one true living God. We exalt you, God. voices to do is if you 
to you is I want you to begin to stand as the king, as if the king is right here. I want you to begin to stand and, and clap your hands and give him joy, give him praises on this morning because of who he is on today. Hallelujah. King, hallelujah. Mm. Come on, give him more, give him one more clap of hand, clap of praise on this morning.
Come on and stand to your feet on this morning and just worship with us. Hallelujah. Dance with us on, the, on this morning. Woo. If there's no God like Jehovah, we want to lift that up. Go ahead and turn it up, son. We hope shining like the sun as the trumpet lift your voice the king of Jubilee out of Zion these are the days of Elijah yeah Declaring the word of the Lord, oh yeah. And these are the days of his servant, Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of your harvest, for the wheels, they are white in the world. And these are the laborers in your vineyard declaring. Trophy call, lift the voice, voice, Out of Zion's here, here. Out of Zion's here. Out of Zion's here. These are the days of Elijah, declaring the word of the Lord. Oh yeah, and these are the days of your servant Moses, righteousness being restored. And these are the days of your harvest, for the fields are a white in the world. And these are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the Lord. Everybody sing. Riding on the cloud, shouting like the sun, at the trumpet's call. Out of Zion's hill, out of Zion's hill, shall they shine. Behold, 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 shining, shining on the sun, shining like the sun, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, at the trumpet's call. You better lift your voice, lift your voice, you hear of jubilee, hear of jubilee, out of Zion's hill, out of Zion's hill, shall they shine. Come on, put those hands together. If there's nobody like God, let me hear you say, oh, 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 Come on, let me hear you say, there's no God like God.
There's no God like 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 There's no
And then following that, the next Saturday after that, we have our South Saturday service. We will be in person. Come on, South. Let's lift up South in place of Pastor Beasley. South did an excellent job, our ministers, last night. So if you didn't catch it, please go back on YouTube and see it. They came in such a grace and an anointing. So we love our ministerial staff at our South campus. So I want you to get excited for that. If you're in the South suburban area, it will be at Lansing at our location there. And we will be having service. And Pastor BC will be giving the word. Amen. 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 So um, what other announcements do we have? What's after that? Oh, Kyle Woman is this Wednesday. So, all right, I know I'm not Pastor Beasley, but women get excited. She is going to be coming to talk about false flagging, to see who's been keeping up with their one word, who's been really keeping up with their one word. So if you forgot about it in May, June, get it back up in your mind and come ready to talk about it because Pastor BZ is going to call you to the carpet, amen, on this coming Wednesday. She's going to talk about false flagging, amen. So don't be a false flagger. Don't say you did it and you didn't, amen, amen, amen. And then after that, do we have any other announcements? I don't believe so, right? Oh, get ready for November, our Founders Month. We All year we've been celebrating. You can give it up. Yeah, yeah, we've been celebrating our apostle. He's 20 years of leading the Way Nation, the founder, the overseer, as well as 30 years of being in ministry as a whole. So we love on him, we give him honor because the Bible says to give honor where honor is due, amen. So we honor him and we love him. Um, so that's about all of our announcements. So I want you to get ready to shift your thinking as we get ready to do our offering. It's offering time, Way Nation. Oh my, I'm, I'm sorry, there's another announcement. Okay, come forward. <laughs> the impromptu announcement, I know about this one, amen. All right. Yeah, it's time. Yeah, it's time. Uh, it's time. You guys know who I am, so. Oh my gosh, all right, let me try this again. How y'all doing that Way Nation Minister CJ right here? How y'all doing now? Um, first off, I just want to say thank you to each and every person that came out yesterday to volunteer at the car wash. Give yourself a round of applause yeah. one more time. You guys were extraordinary. Uh, we went out, we did outreach, yeah. you guys were evangelizing, all yeah. of that good stuff. We were doing it, we were washing cars. Hallelujah. I seen Cookie was spraying cars. Yeah. You know, no, let's shout out to some quick MVPs. Ms. Sheila was killing it. Killing it, killing it. She had the, the vacuum. She was killing it. She yes. was killing it. Shout out to Star. If it wasn't for Star, yes. we wouldn't have able to use that gas station. So thank you, Shonda, everybody that yes. helped out the staff. You guys did it in a major way. Taylor, you was killing it. Yanni was killing it. Man, I don't know who I'm forgetting. Shout out to me for killing it. Yep, I, I killed it. Yeah, I killed Everybody killed we it. We all everybody. killed it. Y'all did a great job. Amen. So, can we get like some drum roll music real quickly? Can we get a drum roll so we yeah. know how much we raise? We can talk about how much we raise. Oh, oh. Are we gonna do it? Everybody just do it. Everybody just bang on the floor or something. Quick drum roll. The Way Nation officially raised a hundred and thirty dollars. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's go. Now here's the thing. What a lot of you may not have known uh -huh. that $130 is going to a particular item that was needed for apostles and kids. So we, we can get it. Amen. We, we can get it. Amen. Uh, we did what we accomplished. We raised what we needed to raise. Yeah. So thank you guys again and look out for more events to come. Amen. Awesome job, Way Nation. Give it up for Minister Raquel and Minister CJ. Amen. Awesome, awesome. Now, guess what time it is? It's offering time, Way Nation. So as you pre get prepared to give, we thank you for your commitment and your faithfulness and your cheerfulness to give. You will see it on our screens. If you are um, virtual, it will be coming on your screen. And that's all the ways you can give here. We have our website. We have our phone number is on the screens. We have 
um, the app that you can go to, Tithely, where you can sow your seed. So we know uh, that there's a need in the house, so we want you to go ahead and give cheerfully, give generously, as the Lord has blessed you to give. We want to make sure that we seal up all holes and gaps in the house. Amen, amen. We can do it, Way Nation. We can do it, all right. So we're going to stand together as a unified body. Um, if you're in the sanctuary, we do have our card reader, as well as you can drop your cash over there with Minister Raquel. Amen? Amen, amen. So I'm going to pray over our offering. Take a moment really quick to ask the Lord what you need to give so that you can hear that and be in compliance with what he wants and wills for your life. Amen, amen. All right, all right. There we go. So as you sow your seed, sow it right now. Oh, we do have an offering declaration. We're going to have our minister, Raquel, say that. We'll switch uh, spots, and then I'll come back and pray over it. Amen. Amen. And then we're going to have um, our table talk. So get excited. We're still in the series talking about revolution and revolutionaries, all right? So it's going to be great. Amen. Yeah. All right, Wade Nation. So as we know, on Commission Sunday, we did have an offering declaration. So can you please stand and repeat after me? Amen. So upon the authority, upon the authority of the word of God, of the word of God, we declare, we declare that the Lord is our provider. That the Lord is our provider. As one as one who tithes and gives who tithes and gives offering offering i am entitled i am entitled to his blessings to his blessings and protection and protection from the attacks from the attack of the enemy of the enemy therefore therefore i bring my tithe i bring my tithe and i bring my offering and i bring my offering into your storehouse today. Into your storehouse today. Knowing that my God. Knowing that my God. Shall supply all my needs. Shall supply all my needs. According to his riches. According to his riches. And glory. And glory. For employees. For employees. We declare good jobs. We declare good jobs. Raises and bonuses. Raises and bonuses. Sales and commissions. Sales and commissions. Promotions and benefits. Promotions and benefits. And favor with our employers. And favor with our employers. And customers in the workplace. And customers in the workplace. For business owners. For business owners. We declare favorable growth. We declare favorable growth. And in contracts. And in contracts. And that these businesses. And that these businesses. Will be profitable. Will be profitable. And a blessing to the kingdom. And a blessing to the kingdom. For his people. For his people. We declare the Lord. We declare the Lord. Shall supply income. Shall supply income. Inheritances. Inheritances. Estates. Estates. Interests. Interests. Rebates. Rebates. Unexpected gifts. Unexpected gifts. And blessings. And blessings. Bills and debts Bills and debt will be paid off. Will be paid off according to my according to my faith in God. Faith in God. I am blessed. I am blessed. Coming in. Coming in. And going out. And going out. And all of that. And all that. I put my hand to. I put my hand to. Will prosper. Will prosper. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And it is so. Amen. And it is so. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So go ahead and seal that with your praise. So it is. So it is. If you said that and you believed it, then it's already coming to you. So we're going to go ahead and pray over the offering because you should have had some time, I think, while we were saying that, to get your mind right and prepared of what you were going to give. So, Father, I thank you for the seeds that are being sown in this house. I thank you that you will add increase for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the advancement of your agenda in the earth. Father, I thank you that what was sold out would come back to them 30, 60, 100 fold, a thousand times greater. And I thank you that every seed that was sown, that you would add the increase. You would cause it to be wild 
watered so that it could bud up and thrive and flourish for the needs that you have and for the needs that this house and this kingdom has. So we thank you, God, for those seeds. I, I thank you that the palmer worm, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the locust cannot eat up our seeds, and they are bound and rebuked now in Jesus' name. So, Father, we bless it and thank you, and we add increase to it, and we give you glory. Amen. And it is so. And it is so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our uh, illustrious table talks are coming up. Our table talk panelists are coming up. They're going to go ahead and get ready to bless us. But I want you to get your minds right way, nation, as we prepare to shift. Take out your notepads if you're out there virtually. We want to take copious notes, so get your notepads. Thank you, AVP. Uh, get your pens, your pencils, your crayons, markers, highlighters, whatever you utilize. But I don't want nobody in here or out there not taking a note. Amen? So be prepared for what the Lord is doing. We stand in agreement with everything he's doing in this house. Um, so without further ado, are y'all ready? Y'all ready? Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Um, Hey, Way Nation. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Um, we doing? We doing. Um, I have uh, myself, the prophet, and the ministers up here. Amen. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm laughing at Minister Hancock because he don't like to be on stage. Amen. Uh, Minister Hancock's the, the <laughs> husband. He don't like to be on stage. Uh, but, amen, we are here. And I am just getting to my notes. Amen. On this morning. So I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna let Prophet take over. Cause she 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 got this. Hey Way Nation. Oh yes, good morning. I love the feedback this morning. So we had an amazing time in worship and um last night, I don't know if any of you guys tuned into South, but if you did, you missed out. Those ladies spoke with proficiency, accuracy. They spoke with power and might. And, I, I mean, I'm just really impressed. As we're going through this series, we're, we're talking about revolutionaries um, from the Central Campus, but they're talking about unity and the power of one for South Campus. And both concepts connect together, and they segue together somehow. Um, but we're going to continue the conversation with power because the objective of the end of this series is to end with not only that level of power, but we're impacting you for next. We're matriculating into sonship next, right? So we want to identify that power that lies within us as sons and how we can revolutionize where we are right now as sons. Amen? So today we're going to... Um, Talk about another level of power, and that is the power of influence. How many of you all have gone through influence moments where you, you're easily swayed to get something? You know, you got people on TikTok promote, you know, stuff to make your hair grow, but they probably make your hair fall out. Stuff that, you know, that you think is going to heal you, is balding you, or is killing you on the inside out. I'm telling you, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those people. I bought some soap, and I thought it was going to do right. It broke me out. So... Yeah, the, but they have an ability to influence you, to alter your reality, to make you think that something is essential in your life when it may not be. So today we want to talk about influencers a little bit, and I'll pass it back to Elder Murphy before I go into, you know, my little thing of influence. Amen. Um, so as we were, as, you know, we were trying to come up with different things for this month, um, influencers kind of came up. Um, as we're talking about revolutions and revolutionaries, you have to think, okay, what or or who influences a revolution? Who do you follow? And so we kind of thought about some of the different people. Um, I know last week we talked about a lot about the Black Panthers, right? We talked about how they were very influential in our or in their in in the revolution of the seventies, right? And how it equates to you know just modern day. So this week, uh, like Prophet said, we're going to be talking about some influencers. Um, I know a big influencer or a person that influenced, um, I would say, gospel music was Kurt Franklin, right? It, it used to be, you know, one, two, three, four. N then next thing you know, he comes up with the hippity hop. And, you know, that's what my, that's what my pastor used to say uh, back in the day. I'm, all of this hippity hop in the, in the church, we can't be doing that. And it's like he influenced and changed music. 
he actually had a song called The Revolution, right? Or Revolution, um, back in the 90s. I know, right? I forgot about that. Uh, he had a song called Revolution back in the 90s, and he was talking about, you know, changing things or changing yourself, changing who you are in order to go into the new millennium, right? So that's kind of where we are. Um, but on today, um, I just kind of want to go to our text scripture, which is Acts 17 and 6. Um, and I'm going to read it in a, in a couple ver- in a couple of uh, different versions. Um, but the verse I'm going to read is in the King James Version. And it says, And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren into the rulers of the city, crying, These that have turned the world upside down are come hither also. All right? So in the uh, contemporary English version, it says, but when they did not find them there, they dragged out Jason and some of the Lord's followers. They took them to the city's authorities and shouted, Paul and Silas have been upsetting things everywhere. Now they have come here. So some context to this scripture, and you guys are more than welcome. You want to go ahead? Okay. So, oh. Go ahead. No, you got it. Um, so contextually, when we look at that text, because you know our apostle, we don't just take a scripture and not provide the context of it. We have to know the circumference of everything that's going on. In the 16th chapter, and if you were in, in tune with Bible study, we did adventures in Acts. So everybody should be very well proficient with Acts. Okay, Braylon, we know you want to preach too. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, but in Acts, Acts 16, we just heard about Paul and Silas and how they were put in jail. And when they were put in jail, they they didn't they weren't upset, they weren't sad. They sang praises all night. They sang it all day and all night. So much so that an earthquake hit in a nowhere. Now we know that was God, and it shook the jail cells. And before they knew it, the jail cells had popped open, and they began to walk out. And they had so much influence and might that the guard that was standing on guard, and I'm paraphrasing, but the guard that was standing there uh, at the gate was like, hey, I'm going to have to kill myself because if they come back and see the child have escaped, they're going to kill me, so I'm going to do it beforehand. But Paul's commission was to extend salvation, was to teach the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in that moment, as a commissioner, he did just that. He gave that man salvation because he asked, what must I do to be saved? Because I don't want to die in the system that I'm currently in. I was supposed to hold you captive and lock your system and make sure that you don't make an impact into the world like you were. And at that time, he was like, all you have to do is receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And it was at that moment that man received that salvation. And as we move on into the 17th scripture, we see that they are at um, Jason's house, I believe. And then they're talking about, um, they're, they're bringing the news to, the, to Caesar. And Jason said, hey, these men, they going around shaking up stuff. They're turning the system upside down. At that time, um, I want to say Rome was under heavy monarchy from Caesar. He was an emperor. And at that point in time, they only could, you know, they had their Greek gods they were worshiping and everything like that. But they were under a government already. But you have two people by Paul and Silas who are coming to corrupt a system that was already set in stone before they probably were even born. And that's the power of commission, that it brings impact, it reforms, it conforms systems and policies and rules, and and makes it come under the subjugation according to the power that works in you. So that's what Paul and Silas were coming to do. And the, the news was getting around that they are turning our world as we know it upside down. And that's a powerful influence. know she was gonna be done that quick i had a, a, a thought that i was thinking about <laughs> um but no that's that's what it was um so you have these men that 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 are literally turning the world upside down you got the disciples that are literally turning the world upside down they're doing it they're they're already they're continuing they're continuing the thing that jesus had done and we all know that jesus was the biggest influencer right because he came into a system, and as we as we talked last week, he came into a a a a, a culture, a, a a system, and he brought a counterculture or counter system up against these people, up against what was already known. And so now we have a we have these people who are continually, I mean, who are continuing the work of Jesus Christ, and they are going from city to city, from city to city, and they're like, okay, 
And now people are like, okay, these people are turning the world upside down. They're doing something that we don't know. And that's how we as, as, as people, as, as the body of Christ should be doing. You know, we, we should be continuing this work just as they are. So we have to be influencers as well. So I was thinking, I was looking up um, what makes an influencer. Um, and just a quick definition, it says an influencer is someone in, in your niche or industry that sways, you ov- that sways over your target, target audience. Influencers have specialized knowledge, authority, or insight into a specific subject. So I know we've been talking a lot about the seven mountains that we're on, right? Or should be on. Education, business. What are you? <laughs> I keep forgetting you. Oh, yeah, she's a nurse. So she's supposed to be on the uh, mountain of medicine or something like that. Uh, 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 or there's a, she got a mountain somewhere around here. Um, but she's supposed to be influencing something somewhere. And, and this one over here, what's yours? Oh, yeah, he's education too. <laughs> so with that being said, we all have knowledge. We all have a niche that we're supposed to be a part of. We all have something um, that we are supposed to zone in on. Like, I don't know how many of y'all have come to me and be like, I need to refinance my car. I don't even work in that business no more. I don't even work <laughs> at the bank anymore. <laughs> like, oh, can you tell, show me how to do a budget? I haven't been at the bank in literally like a year and a half. So, like, <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, what are y'all, why are y'all still coming to me? But I have the grace, I have the, uh, the know-how, the knowledge, and that's my niche. That's what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's why y'all continue to come to me. I'm pretty sure once she opens up her, uh, well, she has a business, par- the, uh, what is it called? Poised you, you Poise Professionals. Poise Professionals. What is it for? Um, it's for self-branding, career development, professional development, all of that. Amen. So yeah. she's going to be doing that. That's her niche. That's what she knows how to do. So she can influence somebody and say, hey, I need you to come over here and possibly work for my business. Or you should come over here and let me help you out with your business or help you out with your resume, this, that, and the other. And, uh, cover letters. I ain't never wrote a cover letter. I, <laughs> there's no reason for me to write a cover letter. Yeah. Amen. Um, but I'm pretty sure it, once I go to my next job, I'm going to need a cover letter. So I'm going to her. I'm going to Poise Professionals. I'm pretty sure everybody in here has has some of Shea Rose, right? Mm-hmm. And and it, yeah. Shea Rose does the skin well. Amen. It makes it shine. Um, I did not put no. no. Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> but I I I, I love Shea, I, look. I bought Shea Rose, but I keep forgetting to put it on. Um, but it's good for you, I think. no. But Shea Rose, it, it that's her business. You know, that's her niche. She knows what she's supposed to do with Shea Rose. So. Yeah, I want everybody to just kind of speak how you want to. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey Amen. Go ahead. I don't want to talk, talk in my notes. Um, <coughs> I, I like I like what you guys are talking about influencers, and I've been just taking a couple of notes. Uh, one of the things that that stood out <coughs> is influencers are people who have built this reputation. I think that's really powerful uh, when I think about the body of Christ and how we should be moving as influencers in the kingdom. Um, Really, really pondering on like the reputation that we have, but not just that, but um, you spoke to that knowledge piece. So that's not just knowing Jesus, but also knowing the walk, knowing, knowing the Bible, knowing the different things that you're supposed to know that will align you to be able to influence the next person to want to have a similar or even a better relationship with God. So I thought that was really big. I just pulled that from there as well. I just don't want to keep talking. Y'all go ahead. uh, I was just going to say, because they talk about uh, qualities of influencers. Um, and things like that. And one thing that kind of stuck out to me in prayer today was, uh, I forgot to say, I think it was Romans 12 and 2. Um, like, being an influencer, you obviously have to be disconnected from the current system that, that you're getting ready to revolu- revolutionize. So it, it made me think heavily about, uh, I believe, like I said, I believe it's Romans uh, 12 and 2. Yeah, uh, don't 
well, in NLT, I like the NLT version. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way that you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So really making sure that you are, are disconnected from the, that system that you're trying to revolutionize. You have to be set apart. You have to... Um, yeah, be set apart so that you can go in and influence the system and, and with God's kingdom, with God's knowledge, with God's words, with what's his, on his heart, on his agenda, and things like that. So being an influencer is really, you have to be really connected to w what you are getting ready to, to influence and, and bring into the world and into, you know, whatever you're about to change and shake up. Yeah. I, I like that scripture and I like the translation that you use. I had never seen that translation. Um, do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. And I mean, it, it breaks it down. You know, we all know the, the normal scripture be transformed. Hold yeah, on. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. mind. Yeah. And so it's like that kind of, for me, it breaks it down. Like, okay, yeah, let me let me not go with what this world does. Let me not go with how this world acts or what this world says we should do. And I mean, I, I go back to you, Prophet. When you, when you, she prophesied, she was like, look, Donald Trump is going to be president. That's not what the world wanted, but that's what God wanted. You know what I'm saying? And as much as I was, and we heard, I mean, uh, myself, Prophet, Apostle, Elder Blanks, we would have discussions over this. Until, literally, until he was president, we would have discussions over this. Like, I don't understand why he's president. I don't, I personally don't like his rhetoric. I don't like the way he does this. I don't like the way he does that. And God's like, but I want him in office for a certain reason. And so we're like, oh, okay. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's about what God wants us to do. You know, it's about what God wants us to do. But we're so used to what our independence and what this world, you know, what the world would do that, or what the world thinks that we go, we kind of just go along with it, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, should we? We we're gonna vote for this person because they're black. We're gonna go with this person because it's you know it's what the world is telling us to do, and that's not what that's not what it is. That's not what God wants us to do. So I like that scripture. I think uh, I like what you said. It, it it makes me also think about how you need to be firm in in what you represent. Yeah. Because. It's crazy how much of an uproar is, even with that topic alone, like knowing that uh, Donald Trump is going to be president. It's, it's crazy how it, it, the world just went in an uproar, or at least all uh, black people at least. But it's crazy how just, even in um, the Bible, the uh, the world will just go into an uproar just by being discombobulated with the new system, with the new information that's coming, yeah. and how it, how it shakes up things. So you really have to be uh, standing flat foot and, and steadfast in what you're representing. You can't be shaken by what the world is throwing at you and what they're saying just because they may disagree or it may not align with their souls or what they want to do, their desires, stuff like that. But you really have to be firm in, in what you represent. One thing that I do like about the scripture <coughs> that you reference is um, the word transform. Because we see it, you know, we go from conform to transform. So it says, don't be conformed, don't be associated, don't be, don't allow yourself to be into the culture, but step out and be the unique one that I called you to be. And I think in this scripture, this is a metaphorical, it's very metaphorical. It's, it gives you a metamorphosis experience, this one scripture by itself. And the reason why I say that is because God deals with the transformation of the soul in this scripture. And if we look at it from a soul perspective, we know that there are 12 dimensions from the mind all the way to the nature. He's wanting you to transform all of that. And sometimes it causes us to shed off of the things that we may have learned over the years. I grew up from baby all the way to 18 to figure out that, you know, I could have operated heavily in the spirit of religion because I was just getting up going to church because that's what my mama told me to do. Never walking into the fullness of the identity of who I am. Or never really 
walking into it and, and accepting it, honestly. Not even if it was told to me, because at, at a young age, I was just told I was a strong prayer person, a prayer warrior, this, 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 and that. But never knowing that my whole world would be transformed at 21 when the apostle told me that I was a prophet. Didn't know what a prophet was either, because, again, spirit of religion keeps you blind and makes you think that you're living, you know, the right life for Jesus Christ. I get up, I go to church, that's going to keep me safe, that's going to go to heaven. No, because you can come to church, you can leave and go home and still be in hell. So the spirit of religion was operating heavy on me, but it was a transformation mark. And I would think that that moment um, that I had with Apostle when he told me that I would be a prophet was my moment that Paul had on the road to Damascus and how he knocked him off of that, that porch and told him, you're going the wrong way, and I'm not going to keep going this way because you're you not obeying what God is telling you. And I think that transformation is, is the preface of becoming an influencer. You have to be able to transform your thoughts, your paradigms, your proclivities, your impacts, everything that baffles you or stops you or halts you from moving forward. You have to alter that and become so that you can influence like you need to. Paul was a Pharisee who was going to kill Jews. Now he's ministering to Jews. Not Jews, sorry, Jews. He's ministering to them. You know, it, it's, 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 it's amazing that God would transform this man. You know, a man who was born in, the, in, a, in a society where he was Greek. He was a tent maker from Tarshish. You know, he was, he was just making tents. His TikTok was probably 20 followers. But now he's so impactful that he wrote two-thirds of the Bible that still impacts today in 2023. The, the words never change. People are still being impacted from the letters that he wrote in prison, the letters that he wrote to the church of Ephesus, the letters that he wrote to the church of Corinthians. All of these things that he has done has left a signature mark because he decided to transform. He didn't decide to stay who he was. He let that, if a horse knocked you off of him and told you from his mouth, you going the wrong way, you going to turn around. Because first of all, I'm not having no Dr. Doolittle experiences with no animals. You're not talking to me. But it took a significant milestone to transform him to be commissioned. He had to be decommissioned off of that horse to be commissioned to do what the Lord told him to do, which was teach the salvation of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus had already ascended. So the apostles were doing the work, but there was an impact that Paul had to make. But it took the transformation before he could make it. Yeah. I'm going to stop preaching, y'all. <laughs> my apostles Drop heard about me. That's Drop an apostolic mic. prophet. <laughs> nah, I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm sorry, because I got a lot of That was apostles. heavy. I was, I was receiving. It was heavy. Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I was writing while you were... Um, while you were going on Paul, and I think you were killing it. And one of the things that I just wanted to add is um, as we're transforming our minds to be influencers, it's important to make sure you know how to measure your influence. Mm. I think that's important. So some of the things that God was giving me um, as she was just killing it <laughs> was there's three things that I see that I was seeing to be able to measure your influence. Um, to know, to make sure, I guess the, the best way I can say it is, to measure your influence is to to know that you're being transformed. Um, one is your followers. And so I asked God, I said, well, what does that mean? I think about social media has, you know, there's influences on social media. They have followers. But then he said, who's watching you? All right. So that's a, that's a point where you're going to be able to measure the influence you have um, as you're being transformed. Who's watching you? Your content. What are you putting out to the world? That can, and I was like, okay, well, I'm thinking about Twitter or, or social media. And God said, no, that's relationship. That's, do you represent him inside and outside of the house? When you step outside, are people seeing God in you the moment you put your feet to the floor? So I said, okay, that's, I get that. Is and that then, lifestyle? Your yes. lifestyle is your content? Yes. Okay. And then I wrote down, niche of operation and i said well what does that mean um and i think q has spoke to knowing your mountain and being sturdy and strong and, and knowledgeable in what you're supposed to be doing and so i definitely will say as as we're transforming our minds to 
be influencers in the kingdom, those are measurements where we have to be able to be able to measure um, that we are that we are being transformed. Or you don't want to be really just thinking you're doing something and then you're not being impactful or you're not moving in the places where he needs you to go because those areas of which you need to be measuring yourself on, um, you're not. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, let me know. Let me know. I just keep writing. I just got a question. Um, so would you guys say that, because uh, he, he mentioned niche, so would you guys say that you kind of have to have a level of professionalism in what you represent or you have to be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Well, yeah, gifted. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? But like, a le there should be a level of professionalism that you exhibit as an influencer, if that makes sense. Y'all all snapping, all of you doing Come on, y'all. Y'all snapping out here, throwing words out. So, so what is your specialty? I'm, I'm just saying, like, do you think there's a, I'm trying to, word it correctly, a, a level of professionalism that you should have as a uh, influencer or should you have a, because he mentioned niche, like, uh, I'm trying to, yeah. yeah. you kind of give him what I'm. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying. I think that yeah, there does have to be a level of professionalism when you, especially in the kingdom, when you, when you are this influencer, right? Um, I look at just some of the influencers that are out there now, right? you know, makeup people and um, makeup artists and even, you know, singers and stuff like that. But makeup artists, they got to know what they got to do. Like, they got to know how to do makeup. You know, they just can't say, oh, I'm going to just do makeup today. I, I, I can't just wake up tomorrow morning and say, oh, I'm going to do Crystal's face. <laughs> she, I have no, she, I have no, I have, right, she can do mine because she know how to do makeup. I don't, uh, no, she can't do mine. Um, but, like, I don't have any experience in doing makeup. So I can't just wake up tomorrow and say, oh, I'm gonna do makeup, and that's it. You know, mm -hmm. some of these people have gone to cosmetology school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that they know how to do makeup professionally. Mm -hmm. Some people, uh, these hair, these people, I've seen women, I saw somebody on, on TikTok the other day, I don't know, this lady had like beads in her hair, it was like beads that had threaded through her head or something like that, I don't know what it was, but her hair was a mess, and it was bad. And this girl, it, w it was really bad. And the, the lady who did her hair, she took the beads out. She got her hair healthy again. And it looked vibrant. It looked fresh. You know, it looked like she hadn't gone through hell and high water, you know, with the last uh, person that did her hair. You know, but this time she did, she looked good. So I'm pretty sure that lady did something or went to school for hair in order to become this artist, you know, this, 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 yes, that this person. So... Um, yeah, go ahead. I think one thing about the niche and professionalism, one thing that over trumps it all is a sense of identity. If you don't know who you are, you can't have a niche. You'll be operating in the wrong thing and not even know it. And I think that's one of the things that we keep echoing over and over again. And I don't know, identity has been heavy on my heart and mind lately because maybe that's because Apostle taught that when I first came here in 2010. It was just identity everything. But you can't operate in a sphere of influence if you don't know where you've been called to. So you have to have a sense of identity. Even within this whole series, we should be reflecting and seeing who we are beyond what Apostle has told you. You may be a prayer minister, you may be an intercessor, you may be a prophet, you may be whatever, but that's, that's, that's surface level. What's the depths of who you are so you can impact? I think of myself just recently going back to this um, the um, disquisition. I keep saying it's a curse word because I don't have to do it no more, but thank God. Um, but I go back to the disquisition and how in the early stages, I started that program with Apostle in 2021. And he, the first thing he had me do was go find out what type of prophet you are. In my mind, I'm just a prophet. Like, I just talk for God and that's it. But that's so surface level. Now, it took me to go on a soul journey to get through the ick of who I am and realize I'm an apostolic prophet. And that term had not been released in the earth yet. You know, I kind of, I, I repent because I, I shuffled my feet a little bit too much. I was supposed to have been wrote something about that. And I didn't. 
But now we're seeing the term become more frequent. But the Lord had told me that in 2021 that I was an apostolic prophet. Had no idea. I was on everybody in their mama website trying to define it, looking for an identity that was niched inside of who I was and in my DNA and in my mantle. So if you don't have an idea of who you are, you're not going to impact anybody. Just like Elder Murphy said, he can't do makeup on somebody. That's not in his sphere of influence because that's not who he's been identified as. Same with all these other people who are on TikTok. I wanted to be a content creator. I wanted to promote fashion and confidence. But one thing I learned about influencers is that they are consistent. They are. Like, they, they tell you, I'm going to post on Sunday at 9 a.m. People look forward to that post at 9 a.m. They don't care if your life is messed up, your mama died, your dog died, ran away. They don't care. They look forward to it. They're consistent. But one thing as believers and the influence and impact we have to make, we have to be consistent. And El, um, Not Elder, ooh, sorry. Um, Minister CJ hit it dead on the head about being consistent. You have to be you have to be disciplined to be an influencer. You can't influence somebody one thing today, sell Jesus to somebody today, and be pop-locking and dropping it on Tuesday. You can't influence a, a nation. You can't even go to the nations if you're not, influ if you're not uh, sure of who you are. You're not sure of who you're, who you're called to or the, the, the area of sphere of influence that you're operating in. And I think that you have to know that before you know your niche. Because the identity is the key to unlocking your destiny. I hope somebody caught that. I hope somebody caught that. The identity is the key to unlocking your destiny. You all have books in heaven that is written of you. And they tell about the forthcoming and foretelling of what's to come in your life. But you can only access that book if you know who you are. You come into the library of heaven, I am the son of the most high Lord God almighty. And I come to read the book that is written of me. I can go in there because I know exactly who I am. But do you go in there and I can't go in there and start reading Miss Sheila's book. That's not the book that was written of me. I can't go in there unless I'm prophesying. And that's a whole nother story. But I can't do that because I, my identity is not hers. So we have to know who you are before you can even touch an influence or touch impact. Oh, me? Yeah, me too. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking notes. I'm taking notes. Right, I'm saying you over there. You just write sorry, everything down. No, no, I was, no, I was, I agree. I think, I think one of the things um, that Prophet said that just caught my attention too, um, and I wrote it down, influencers, and I'm thinking power, um, developing relationships. And I think the, the important piece behind the developing relationships um, not just goes into knowing who you are, but recognizing the, what people see um, will, uh, will ultimately determine that influence that you have and, and the consistency of you sh learning who you are that walk with God will ultimately continue to build those relationships with those that you need to be influenced by. Um, but that starts with you being in his face. That starts with you really understanding who you are. And then you'll pull them in automatically. That was something that I thought was really, really, really key. Yeah. I, I enjoyed that. And I'm so glad you brought identity into it. Um, because just like you, your first message was identity. That's all like for like a good year apostle talk. <laughs> like it was he taught identity, identity, identity. I'm like, look, yeah, I know who I am. About it. And, you know, and like really we had CDs, we had yeah, we had MP3 play like MP DVD. And DVD. We had yes. everything on identity. <laughs> but it was it was it was it was a pivotal it was a pivotal point in time, not only for me, but it was a pivotal point in time for this ministry. Because we we're trying to figure okay, who are we? Who who is this house? You know, and we've gone through like how many how many how brandings, brand how many different W's and branding have we gone through for this house to know who we actually are? Like, yeah, he had a he had a vision. You know, you got we had the vision, we had the five M's, the saving message that Jesus is the way. Okay, cool. Yep. Uh, 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 you know, we had all of that. We had it all, but we still didn't know who we are. We didn't know who we are and what we were here to do until his commission. Like, his commission really solidified, like, oh, this is what we're here to do. Yep. This is who we're here to affect. We ain't got time to figure out nobody else. So our lane 
once we figured out who our, what, we, what we were here to do and got that commission, we knew our lane. And we're not going to step in and drive into nobody else's lane. We ain't going to try to do nothing else nobody else going to do. We ain't going to be trying to do, you know, uh, food banks and all this stuff because that's not a part of our commission. As, mu as many hungry people as it is out there, there's about 10 food banks in the cab. Yeah. You can go on Monday, Wednesday, Friday over to Walmart and get you some food because there's, a, there, I, I believe so, um, you know, or somewhere <laughs> in the cab and get you some food, you know. So what's the purpose of us doing that all over again? Mm -hmm. You know, we have our lane. We know that we're supposed to have Way Nation Publishing. We know that we're supposed to have Way Nation Bank Corp mm -hmm. and media, and we know that we're supposed to establish the five churches in these areas. Why we why would we go to Downers Grove and he told us to go in Bolingbrook? Mm -hmm. Why would we go uh, to to Lansing? And, I mean, I'm not sorry, not Lansing. Why would we go up, up up to up north somewhere and he told us to go to Northbrook? You know what I'm saying? Why would we go to a different city or or go to Sycamore? Because because here's the funny thing: we almost went to Sycamore. Mm -hmm. There was a place mm -mm. that we were, as we were looking, there was a place in Sycamore that Apostle was like, this is a great worship space, we're going to take it, da, 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 da. And this one over here was like, this is not it. This is, and she kept saying, Apostle, this is not it. Apostle, this is not it. <laughs> and the Lord said DeKalb. So why would we be in Sycamore if we were supposed to be stationed in DeKalb? You know, so once we know our lane, once you know your lane, you can't go into nobody else's lane. I'm not trying to go and, and do education, because guess what? That's not my lane. I'm going to continue to help y'all <laughs> refinance cars and get y'all uh, to do these, you know, do your budgets every month. That's what I'm going to do, because that's my lane. I know who I am as, as a person now. And it took me a long time to figure out who I was. I have been on a journey of identity for years. And guess what? The person who I was in 2009 when I stepped in here, I am not now. 13 years later, I am not that person. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Romans 12 and 2, I've transformed my mind. I've gone into the depths of my soul. I've had to do these soul assessments and continuously doing those assessments because I had to know who I am. And now that I know who I am, I can go and affect the people who I need to affect in my lane, on my mountain. And even when you're on your mountain, hey, you can't step over to somebody else's stuff, yeah. even if you're on your mountain. I know I'm supposed to do things in real estate. So guess what? I'm not going to go over here and try to be nobody's financial advisor. No, let me do real estate. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm supposed to do. Let me, I'm going to know everything about real estate. I'm going to know everything, how to build houses or, or transform communities or do this, that, and the other. So that, that's what the Lord told me to do. So now I'm not going to try to go in nobody else's lane and say, okay, you should invest over here. I don't know investments. That's not what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. I'm supposed to do real estate. Why am I telling you to invest in, in this corporation in China when I have no idea what that means? Yeah. Real estate. Go ahead. Um, so I kind of got a two-part question for you guys. And then I want to <coughs> hit a pinpoint that the Lord gave me. Um, so everybody's familiar with algorithms, right? Yeah. And like how <laughs> it's weird because I feel like the government really does be listening to our phone calls. I I could I literally can remember I was talking to my mom about this. I was like, Mom, for dinner we should do this little chicken thing. We should do this with the garlic sauce. Da da da. I promise you, as soon as I opened up TikTok, that recipe was right there. I said, That's weird. So I mean, that I guess in one sense can be a form of algorithm. But I guess another one would be, let's say when you're researching something and. Um, it just ends up popping up on your Facebook. I look for shoes, you know, that are on sale. The shoes are now being advertised on, on Instagram. I, I've never been to this website before. So <laughs> algorithms impacts the processes of your computer and the calculations of your computer. Let's talk about algorithm impacting the soul. As an influencer, how does the algorithm of your day-to-day -day life impact your soul so much that it causes you not to influence the people you are called to. Yeah, I mean, it's very reflexive. <laughs> How does the algorithm of your soul impact those who you have been called to influence? Well, I'll say this. If your algorithm is off, then you're not gonna affect the people because those people who are speaking the language that you're supposed to hear, like you say, the government listens to our phone, right? Um, computers or whatever. 
So if they're, if they're talking and you're not listening, then you're not going to hear what they're saying. If they're talking and you, yo, your soul is dysfunctional, your soul is in a whole other different place, your soul is, is messed up, you, you flawed here, you flawed there, you got this, that, and other going on, yeah, Jesus can, Jesus can open up that door and be like, yeah, come on, you know, let's talk. But you're in, a, you're in the wrong space, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're not in the right headspace in the soul. I even look at when I was at the bank. And people would come into my office, and I'd be like, oh, Lord, I do not want to deal with these people today. <laughs> I'm tired of these people. I, it's, I got 50 people coming in here talking about overdraft fees. You did it. You messed up. That was your fault. I'm not returning these overdraft fees. Right. So, but if, if my soul is off, then I'm not able to affect some of those people. You know, there are many times I, I sat there and I prayed for people. I ministered to people. I, you know, people got saved in my office, this, that, and the other. You know what I'm saying? But my soul had to be right. And I had to be, you know, I- in myself and know myself enough to be like, okay, I can prophesy to you. I can talk to you. I can minister to you. I can mend you right now. And people still would still come back like months later like, oh, thank you for that word that you gave me. Or thank you for what you told me. Or, oh, I know I should have taken your advice six months ago. Yeah, you probably should have because that was the Lord. But, you know, <laughs> but my soul was right, you know. But if your soul's not right, and your al- that algorithm is not right in your soul, then you're not gonna be you're not gonna be right. You're not gonna hear the people that the Lord uh, brings to you. I think that's so that again speaks to how important it is for a soul assessment because what what deities are influencing your algorithm? If if your soul not right and and you know you off, what what deity is is going on speaking in your soul, influencing the the advertisements in your soul and everything that's throwing you off to be able to affect the people. So, again, that uh, speaks to the importance of soul assessment. Um, when I think of that question, one of the things as influencers, or a lot, we know a lot of TikTok influencers and YouTubers and those different things, right? There is a particular metric that um, social media influencers utilize to track um, their performance, uh, rather it be how many people watch their videos or how many followers did they get in this certain amount of time. I've heard Deanna speak about some of the metrics that the church has had from when we got a certain amount of followers to when we got more followers or what are they liking, what are they disliking. Um, to answer the question, when your algorithm is off, um, it's difficult to measure some of those metrics. And I think at that point, you're either you're decreasing not just the influence, but really your ears to hear God in those moments um, to doing what he needs you to do, not just for you, but even for somebody else. And so it is, it's very important to make sure that the algorithms are together and tracking some of those things so that you can always be increasing more. And as you're increasing, that means you're, you're impacting others. And so now we're, we are being influencers at that point because your algorithms are not all over the place. The metrics are not up and down. And, and again, that's uh, an example of that, just is seeing um, where we've come from, um, how far we've come with our following um, on the web pages and those different things. I like what you said because you kind of touched on a little bit what I was going to next, because I can answer it for myself too. It's about resetting the algorithm. I know old school method with your computers, whenever my computer crash at work, my signature should go to, everybody know, control, alt, delete. <laughs> it's gonna cut everything off, <laughs> we gonna be all good. Sometimes, working at my job, control, alt, delete does not work. So I learned, <laughs> it doesn't, because I literally will unplug the computer and just close it and tell my boss, I, I, I don't know what's going on, I'm done. That's why I hate remote work. I need to go back to an office. But um, I know that another way we could do it is clear the cash cookies or whatever, kill, clear the cookies out, and you know it'll reset everything. And I love what you said about a soul assessment because a soul assessment resets the soul. It gives you a chance to actually go in and see what's there and you deal with it and reset it. And I think that when it comes to influencing and even that algorithm of what's in your soul, you have to know what's there. You can't, I can't teach Jesus at work if every day I got a bad attitude. Every day I'm mad that I'm here. Every day I'm, 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 I'm not impacting those who I'm supposed to impact. You are so horrible. I'm not impacting those who I'm supposed to impact because they already have a, 
afford, like they already see something else. So we have to go in and clean out the soul. I remember I had to reset my TikTok algorithm because I promise you everything was in Africa. I live in America. I mean, I'm learning different jollof rices, different dance moves. I mean, maybe it's my future husband out there. Hey, how you doing if you watch it somewhere? You know, but <laughs> I had to reset the algorithm of my TikTok. Now it ain't nothing but people going to eat. I don't know how many Chicago restaurants I have saved in my phone, but we have to constantly go through and reset the algorithm of, of our souls. We have to reset it because if I stayed in Africa too long, I'm missing the impact of America, where I'm supposed to do my work. I'm called to the nations, like to go with Apostle when he goes and ministers to those nations, but my feet don't belong there right now. My impact is here right now, before the Lord can send me places. So you have to reset the algorithm of your soul. You have to go in there and expose what's there, why it's operating, how long it's been operating, and then decommission it so that it doesn't have a, a place to come back to work in. So I'm going to put my little apostolic gun, my uh, little second finger back up. Because you know I'll be ready. So <laughs> um, if you don't mind, I got another one for y'all. Last week we talked about revolutionaries being apostolic. This week, I believe influencers are prophetic. The reason why I say that is because they have the ability, the prophetic has the ability to come and disrupt your current flow of things. Whenever, you know, we have a high prophetic service, apostle says I'm calling the what? An audible. It pisses me off inside because that's not the order. That's the apostolic side of me. That's not the order of the way things are supposed to go. But the prophetic has a way of coming in and conforming the way of things to how they originally flowed and structured. And I think that's the same might of an influencer. An influencer comes and conforms your way of thinking. Somebody on TikTok, and I, I go back to TikTok a lot because I know that's what majority of us use. I'm telling you, I have so many clothes from Fashion Nova that I never even wore or needed in my life because I saw a girl with a body that looks very similar to mine, and if it looks cute on her, it'll look cute on me. It don't look cute on me. <laughs> it don't, but the power of influence to interrupt my work. I probably was at work when I bought it. So it took me off of my current task and caused me to do something completely different. And that's why I say I think it's prophetic. The influence, uh, influencers are prophetic because they have that, they know their niche, they know their operations, they know they come to corrupt the system, to transform it back to what God originated for it to be. So in this, in all of that, how do you feel like, well, what do you feel like your job is as an influencer in the kingdom of God? I went first last time. Yeah, they are very, very reflective questions. Right, I just need a few seconds to think first. That's a good question. <laughs> what y'all think? <laughs> um, I, I would say uh, I know who I am, and sooner or later, not now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this, sooner or later, I will be an apostle. Um, but again, my apostle grace is not in the church. My apostle grace is in the king, uh, is in the is in the mountain of business. So for me, although I am an apostle there, I am a pastor here. So in, in the church, I flow well as a pastor. I love on everybody. I make sure y'all are okay. I make sure that the lights are on, that, the, that, that the, 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 these fans keep, keep fanning. Make sure that y'all not hot in the, in the summertime. Make sure that y'all warm in the, in the wintertime. You know, as a pastor, as an executive pastor, that's my role. That's my job within the kingdom. And so, uh, and as a pastor, an elder, I'm government of this house. I'm not going every other into no other no other house. So if you are part of Way Nation, don't matter if you Northbrook, I was about to say Southbrook, Northbrook, Bolingbrook, whatever, uh, whatever, whatever campus that you are, that's the government. That's where I. Not, I don't want to say rule that, but that's where I am going to be at. That's my specialty. G going to somebody else's church and preaching, that's not me. Mm -mm. Going to somebody else's in churches and doing praise and worship by myself, that's not me. I, that, that grace is gone. You know, a, as much as I love to sing and this, that, and the other, and love doing praise and worship, gone. I, nope, don't want, nope, don't want to do it. Don't ask me to do it. No. So, I, but I know that's my lane. So, for me, it's to influence the people to, to keep coming, you know, it, and to love on the people and 
to make sure that y'all are okay and you know make sure that y'all brains are fine and you're not going through hell and high water this week. So you may get a text message, hey, how are you? You okay? You doing good this week? You know, or you on a Sunday morning, I may pull you into my office. Hey, Tay Tay, how you doing, girl? You know, your hair, you, your hair was all over the place today. You know, th- you know, it could be something like that. You know, or you bring me a problem. You bring me a situation. I say, okay, this is what I'm supposed. You're supposed to do. That is what my niche is. That's what my influence is in the church. And so, um, yeah, I don't, I don't want to do nothing else. I don't want to be an apostle. I, d- I definitely don't want to be a prophet. Cause no. Mm-mm. No, you know, evangelists, don't ask me to go out there and talk to nobody. No, I, I need to know you first. I need you to come into my sphere, and, so, and I love on you, you know, not me go out there and tell you to come to Jesus, because I don't do that. Um, but, or what's the other one? Uh, 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 teacher. I, you know, I got a teaching grace, but Elder Blanks is more of a teacher than I am. You know, I get, y'all call me the rebuking elder. Like, I rebuke every time I get up here. Like, I know I don't, but that's what everybody say that I am. Okay, so I rebuke. Um, but, yeah, that's my, that's my grace. That's my, that's my lane. Um, so we're talking about, like, our, our individual mm-hmm. influence in the kingdom, right? Um, I mean, I know, of course, you, you all see me as chief. Uh, and uh, intercession and everything like that, but I also uh, know and am still learning um, that my influence also stretches in the medical field. My influence also stretches in in the works that he wants me to do, um, and the people that he wants me to reach in the in the medical setting, in the hospital setting, in the in the in the work that in the administrative administrative work that he wants me to do. Uh, reaching people, bringing solutions that he wants for uh, things in the medical world and stuff like that. So my, my influence is a little different. It's not necessarily, you know, the, the going out preaching the word and things of that nature, stuff like that, or the average, what you may see. But my, my influence comes in bringing the solution he wants into the earth realm in the area of medicine or in the area of uh, administrative work when it comes to nursing and things of that nature. So I'm still kind of exploring it, learning it, getting more depths of it. But uh, yeah, we Apostle always talks about how we're not, some people aren't always called to the church or called to the four walls and things of that nature. Not saying that I'm not, but my influence also stretches outside of that as well. Um, I want to say that I'm still learning um, where my niche is. Um, I know that I've been called to to education, and um, I and for the longest, for me personally, for the longest, really trying to define what that looks like, not just off of my past experience of what I did not have, <laughs> but. I would like to have a better perspective of what God wants versus of just trying to be something that I didn't have versus, okay, I need to be this because God wants it in this way. So I'm not really putting my all, putting my own perspective in, in more so. I guess I get a little bit more clarity from him on how to do things. Um, so I think that'll help me. I also recognize that um, I think another niche of mine could be community outreach. I'm starting to see that don't do that. Don't do that. Again, I just said I'm learning. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. sure. Okay. But I will say I recognize that it, it is. Okay. I recognize that I recognize that that those two are areas where I need to learn more of why. Um, but those are two areas for me that I'm learning. Like those are things that um, have really started to grab a hold of me. So those would be my answers. Okay, um, I would say I know you. I know you all have these places um, that you're. You know, we all have these mountains. I guess. How influential do you think that you are right now? Mm-hmm. In whatever, wherever you're, wherever you're supposed to be, or. In Right now, just right now, where do you think you are right now, if in in your influence? 
So like if we were to geographically like look at a mountain, are we in the valley? Are we at the base? Yes. Are we on ascending towards the apex? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I'm okay. Like, I'm like very top. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want? Even the water. When what? She said water. She said <laughs> their body. What? Jesus. Come up. <laughs> Come up the mountain of the Lord. <laughs> okay, so I got. I have. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um. When, when you asked, you know how, where you are, if you think about on the mountain, um. If we're not in, how do I say this? If I don't feel like I'm in, I guess, the specific role, right, that I believe that's where he wants me. And, and maybe I've heard him say, like, this particular role, right? Like, I've, okay, I'll give you an example. I've worked in admissions. Mm -hmm. But I was told by him that I was going to be running a university, right? Mm -hmm. So because I have the experience in education, but I ain't in that position, am I still, like, on the mountain all the way, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or like, yeah. am I like in the dirt? You're on the mountain. Well, I'm like on the mountain. Yeah, I think but you're on the mountain. I'm on the mountain. You ain't at the peak. Oh, I'm the, but it, you now at the peak, the, but is the peak to run the university the or no. is the experience no. getting to the peak? That's the thing because I understand because I'm in the same, okay. we're, we're on the same mountain. You have to know that a person who climbs Mount Everest doesn't just float to the top instantly. It's not like, oh, I have the idea, I can climb this mountain. Oh, I'm at the top already, no. It's, start, it's a process, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. They take days where they camp on certain parts of the mountain because they can't go any further. That Their breathing changes the higher the altitude they go. And for you, and, and I will even say for myself, because I'm in admissions, God has to teach us the foundation before we can overrule anything. If, if he doesn't teach us the foundation, We'll go in with pride thinking that I earned this and I deserve to be here because God sent me here. And that doesn't back you up. So you have to start in the valley. You have to learn the steps of admissions. Then from there, you can matriculate into another part of the academic world. And then from there, you can begin to increase and increase. And then when he finds you faithful in that dean position, now I can just really throw you into the office of the president so that they can see where you belong. They can see how you move. They can see how you act. They can see everything because you already gained this knowledge throughout the entire process while you were ascending. You know how admissions work. You know how curriculum is developed. You know all of this stuff. Now I can sit you with a company and good man because you I found you faithful and I can trust you and that's how we ascend we have to realize that ascension is a process look at it from the natural sense you don't just get to the top you have to camp out in some places because you're breathing at that it's a certain level of Mount um, Everest where you can to stop your breathing level changes because the altitude is different the atmospheres I think or you can't you can't survive up there so you have to learn the steps and be appreciative of the process until you rule. A king doesn't just rule because of who he is. It's the lineage in which he's come from that makes him a trustworthy leader and a trustworthy king, if that makes sense. I, I look at it like this as it well. Does. I look at it like this. You know, I think of people who are in government, right? Most people that are in government have a law degree. They, or they you know, yeah, most of them have law degrees. You know, so they got to go to school for I don't know how many years to become a lawyer, and then they g you know they go to school for like 15 years to become a lawyer. Then they go and they may get a job. They may not originally get a job in Washington. Maybe they started a law firm or they, you know doing it's a, a, a being a certain type of lawyer. You got a defense attorney. You got prosecutors. Okay, maybe and then you move into some people move into judgeships. You know that's a part. That's a part of being on the mountain is being a judge. Or, you know, and then you may be a Supreme Court judge, you know, that's the that's the peak, that's the apex of the mountain. You know, so you know, you may you may sit on a judge as a judge in your community or in, you know, wherever in your city or, or state or whatever, and you're sitting on that mountain. Or you could go into, you know, be a congressman. Being a congressman is sitting on the mountain. You're making laws. You know, the apex of being a congressman is being the 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 uh, one of the highest people, the president pro tempore or whatever, or the speaker of the house, you know, that's being the highest congressman. Or you can go and be the president, you know what I'm saying? So there are multiple ways that you can be on the mountain, but it, like Prophet said, it is a journey. 
and you may have to sit on different plateaus or different places on the mountain for a while in order for you to get to that next step. Again, it's not, you just can't be, I mean, someone can be 35 years old and then just go run for president and win. But you don't have the experience. You don't have the influence. You don't know, people don't know who you are. You're just saying, oh, I'm running for president. Say, for instance, Kanye West, he ran for president in 2020. <laughs> who voted for him? I mean, certain people did, you know, but because he had that type of influence, but did he become president? No, because he didn't have the experience. He didn't have the know-how. People thought he was crazy. Bless his heart. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I was about to say something, but bless his heart. We're going to pray for him. Uh, but you just can't get to being the president without going through a, a, without going through and having experience. So that's why I asked, like, where are you guys? Where do you feel that you're at on your mountain, or where do you feel at in ge in general? You don't even have to speak, say it in the mountain or I'm on the mountain. Just like for me, I know that hey, I'm just really starting out in this business world. Mm -hmm. I have some experience by being a banker and being in this logis and being in my logistics position now. But I don't know everything about business, or I don't know if I'm on the track to even being a real estate agent, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to get an MBA in a few weeks. So I'm like, am I in the right position? You know, and so I've thought about that over and over and over. Okay, if I'm going to be on this mountain, then I do have to go get an MBA. Mm -hmm. Then I do have to go get this education so that I'm able to know and affect the people. And I mean, I don't know how many people I'm going to talk to mm -hmm. that, you know, a, a, and gain influence from when I do take, when I do go through this program. Like, I, I'm, I, as as I go through this program, they, they tell us that there's a plethora of alumni that I'll be able to grab hold of and talk mm -hmm. to and, and 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 gain knowledge and things of that nature from. So I'm gonna use I'm gonna influence. Hey, my name is Quentin Murphy. I'm you know I'm I know who I am, and this y'all gonna know who I am too. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. That's why I was asking that question. I think for me, I'm I'm on ascension. Um, Apostle had prophesied to me, and I, I promise you I just held this word so near and dear to my heart a couple of weeks ago, and he said God is going to do a quick elevation. And it's like after I did that disquisition, I just feel like God is just like snatching me up, snatching me up, snatching me up. He's expanding my cognitive. He's expanding the way I think, the way I perceive things. And I think now he's, he's I, I've, I've done the vetting process, so now I can prepare to ascend. You know, I've been working with, like Tina said, we've been in, working in admissions. I've been in there for about four years. But I know that that time is coming to an end because it's now the time for me to ascend and go to the next thing. It's funny because God has me working with high-level people at my job doing stretch assignments, creating retention plans for students so that they can feel comfortable and matriculate through their program without feeling like they're alone. I'm sitting at the table with provosts, presidents of universities, conversing with them over things that I feel like I, I would never do in, the, in my wildest dreams. So God is elevating me, so I feel like I'm ascending. I feel like I'm growing, I'm developing, I'm matriculating. I've had the time where I had to sit and be the student. Now I'm growing and learning and developing. And just like Elder Murphy said, he's get, when he, when he, ugh, with him getting ready to go back to his MBA program, God is expanding me even more as well because he's sending me back to school. Okay, you got the doctorate in ministry, let's get the doctorate in education so that that can back you up with where I've called you to be. So it's not like we love student loans and we want to go back to school because we, <laughs> we want to pay them back. No, uh, I wish somebody would pay for me. Hey, somebody out there sponsor me, please. Um, but honestly, it's a part of the journey and a part of the commission. Yeah, because you don't get no grants in, in grad school, so. It's all scholarships and loans. Somebody sponsor me, please. But I think that as we continue to ascend up that mountain and go into that journey, that's where more identity would would be revealed to us. So I, I would know, like, I just went through my whole commission and told everybody exactly why I'm here, how I'm supposed to do it, where, where I'm going, and everything like that. I can't say today I want to jump and be all the way there. I'm growing in it. I, I have to, it's just like, 
it's just like a cute dress. You may put it on, the fabric may rip a little bit because you're a little, you're not ready to get your body into it. But once you get into that gym and you start changing the regimen of your diet, you're gonna slim right into that dress. So the same concept applies here. You gotta change the diet in which you're taking in, the things that are unhealthy for you that will prohibit you from ascending. Because I've never seen a morbidly obese person climb Mount Everest. Everybody who climbed Mount Everest before was relatively healthy. And I'm, I'm serious because if you can't even breathe after walking 20 steps, you, how you gonna go up a mountain? Like, you can't overtake it. So you have to change the diet. You have to change the, your routine, live it, so that you can properly ascend. And I think that's, if, if I answered your question, that's where I am. I'm ascending at this point, climbing. I don't think I'm gonna change my answer. Uh. <laughs> No, but uh, I like that you brought out the idea of um, the process and, and the journey of an influencer. Um, because a lot of times, I, I think you said, I think earlier you mentioned something about the influencer being prophetic. I think the journey is also prophetic, and there uh, are a lot of audibles that, that come through that journey. Um, it, doesn't, it ne doesn't necessarily look like what we may expect it to look like. Uh, I know for me, I was expecting to graduate from nursing school in four years, um, graduate, pass the NCLEX, get my nursing job, and, and that would be life. But yeah, that didn't happen the way it was. It, I imagined that it would. It took me four and a half years, um, and I still currently haven't, you know, passed the NCLEX. But I even realize now that I mean, I will. Obviously, I will. I will. Yes. Um, but I realize now, um, like, I would wonder a lot about why I'm not a nurse, not officially a nurse yet, or why I'm not in the field, or uh, I look at other people, it went smooth for them, they went through the process, they went through school, they passed, they're in the field, you know, they went through the, the path and the journey that I thought I was going to go through. But I have to realize, even now, just in this moment, when you talked about, you know, the journey, um, I had to go on my own journey to learn the things that I need to learn for what I'm going to do. I'm not working in a hospital setting right now, but I, I work still in a similar uh, medical setting where I'm um, uh, working with, like, insurance claims and things like that. So I'm seeing a different side to the medical field that's going to be useful to me when I get to that place of administration and running a hospital and or being over patient care services that the knowledge that I'm getting now, I'm probably going to use it when I get to that position. So I'm, I went through some audibles. I went through some some different places that then I that I didn't expect that I was gonna go, but I, I'm still learning things that are gonna um, add to me being the successful influencer I need to be when I get to the to the peak or to the top of the mountain. So I will say, I, I'll change my answer. I will say I'll, I'm on the ascending path. And then also I'm starting uh, my master's program as well. Woo! <laughs> educated house, y'all. We is an educated house. Okay, I wouldn't expect that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm also starting my master's program in health in health administration. So that's also another step, another um, stop on the journey towards uh, where I'm going to be. So yeah. You gonna talk about your process? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I guess I would have to ask one last question. Does anybody have any, uh, any last thoughts on? influencers or you know what we talked about today up, up here up here oh. up here first oh, up here I'm thinking this is me. Uh, I can just I mean I would just echo the fact that in order to be an influencer you have to go through that soul assessment so that you can so that you can um, properly be in place so you can have the right influence <laughs> So, so the right thing is influencing you to be an influence um, and to, to really assess that journey that you need to go down. Because like I said, it, it may not look like what we what we'd expect. It may not look like what we, what we thought it was going to be or what we may have expected. 
but um, really sitting and and sitting with God, taking that that intimate time with Him, and getting that level of identity, really um, learning the depths of who you are, who where you're called to, what type of influence you're supposed to have, and then the soul assessment that's needed in order for you to get there. So I think those are just big things to echo from the conversation. Um, I just think personally, Prophet should go last because she been <laughs> killing it. <laughs> just put that out there. No, um, I would say when I think about influencers being an influence, influencer, um, the word consistency has continued to stand out. I think just when Prophet touched on identity, when even ascending and everything, um, there is a level of consistency that we need to make sure where we have um, within our daily walk with God, uh, building our relationships and, and, and being able to track where we are. I think a lot of the stuff that we even talked about, it came from a level of consistency rather than professional consistency, the work we do inside the church, outside of the church. You heard a lot of our stories um, and it takes time and consistency is in the midst of time. So that would be the only thing I would echo one more time. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I mean, um, oh yeah, Prophet, what was I trying to say? Uh, okay, I'll go then. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so when we, um, I guess when we think about influencers again, he defined it perfectly when he talked about, you know, someone who has a niche for a certain industry, but also a person who has the power to um, produce effect on changes on people or whatever um, through your behaviors and your opinions and views and stuff. And I think that we have to see ourselves not so much as in terms of a millennial in influencer, but just be the change, you know, be the transformed. Be the conformed one. You know, go back to Romans 12 and 2 and make it applicable to your soul each and every day. I'm not saying you got to walk and shake down people at 7-Eleven talking about, take Jesus, he's yours. Like, <laughs> no, but <laughs> really just be the change. Be Jesus in the earth. Give the earth what it needs. And what the world needs is Jesus Christ. Look at all of the stuff that we're going through with with the laws and policies that are changing around us. We can't walk up to transgenders and say, take Jesus and be accepted the way he made you. No, because they're not gonna receive that. But we have to be the change that we want to see in the earth. But we have to also know who we originate from. I can't, I can't influence you to reflect Jesus if I don't reflect him on a day-to-day -day basis. I can't if expect you that's, that's where that consistency comes in because that's part of the influencer life cycle, that they are consistent. I can't expect you to be anything less than what I, I show you, who I, what I show you, what I provide for you. So what I would tell people to do is to be that influence, be that representation of Jesus. I can only represent him because I know him, I look like him, I smell, I, well, I don't know what Jesus smelled like, probably smell like lamb and sand and billy goats and, and everything else, but I don't know a hot day in, in Israel. I don't know. I, I ain't never been there. He probably smelled like that. And a little bit of spit from the person in the eyeballs, but you know, I'm not <laughs> I'm ice <of> Jesus. <laughs> but I know, I mean, when I say I, I, I want to reflect him, I want to smell like him in heaven, because I'm pretty sure heaven smells good. I don't want to smell like Jesus smelt in the earth. I don't know. Maybe he smelled good. I don't know. I wasn't alive. But, um, yeah, I want to be that reflection of him in the earth. I want to be that. So that's one thing I would take away. She don't want to smell like earth Jesus. She want to smell earth like. Jesus. He was a carpenter, so I know he had some musty days, you know, <laughs> as a carpenter. <laughs> Carrying all that wood and stuff. No, she wants to smell right. like Lord, heaven. Lord, I'm sorry. Jesus. Don't take me out. You know they had the odor back then. Or some she, we don't know. Then. We don't know what Mr. Jesus smelled like. Laughing. We don't, don't know what Jesus smelled like. We do not know what Jesus smelled like. She wants to like heaven, Jesus. I want to smell like Jesus and have the perfect Lamb of God. That's what I want to smell like. <laughs> Amen. And congratulations <laughs> to you too, Miss Ingrid. We just saw your post. You're starting your bachelor's in healthcare administration. Call me on Monday uh, at the Rock if you want to go there. Hallelujah. Uh.
Um, well, I would say uh, I don't really have much left. I'll just say th- they've uh, echoed what everyone else said. You know, uh, take that scripture, Romans 12 and 2. Seriously, Minister Shannon, I'm so glad you brought that out because I don't think any of us had that, did we? No. Yeah. <laughs> we I've been studying that. that, <laughs> that <laughs> right, we've been had, we 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 had Acts seventeen and six. We was gonna go there, but she, Minister Shannon brought that out with uh, Romans twelve and two. That came from so, <laughs> man, I I I would say really figure out how you're being transformed. Hear the Lord on what you need to transform into. And Minister Hancock, you brought it. The the multiple ways of, of, I even wrote it down. I had to take notes. I'm like, okay, the measurement, how you measure your transformation or measure your influence. Um, followers, mm-hmm. you know, do you have people following you? Um, your content. The lifestyle. Um, the <laughs> right, your lifestyle me. is your content. Like, man, that was crazy. And then the nit- your, what's your niche of operation? So knowing your mountain. Um, so, yeah, I, I, that's it, Way Nation. We are out of time. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo. Give God a hand, clap of praise. <laughs> Um, yes, we uh, did it. Sit down. We hope y'all like us. I told y'all he, he, he don't. <laughs> he, he don't. He don't like. He don't like to be <laughs> up here. Um, we are gonna take God a few, him. just a few questions. Make sure that they are. <laughs> please make sure that they are questions, guys. Not just com- comment, but questions. So, um, go ahead. No, you cannot. Mm-hmm. Amen. Elder Blanks. <laughs> Give him a mic, please, Lord Jesus. I can't repeat these questions. <laughs> Is the mic on? First part of oh, Amen. First part of this question was um I know, I heard him. I can't stand him. I, I love him though. Um, 
Oh, my ear was ringing. Okay, so <laughs> first part of the question is, from the Bible, who is your favorite influencer? That's the first question. Characters in the Bible. Ooh, that's Ooh. It's a lot. You got Abner, you got Eglon, E Hood, J L. E Hood was that dude. <laughs> the first part of the question is you they say the person. And then I have I have two more questions after that. I don't want Jesus. That's an easy answer. Don't so say don't say Jesus, I, Holy I Spirit, uh, the dove that descended. Who is your favorite I influencer mean, you from the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> Why you gave it off? I, um, I would probably say Esther. Who? Es I would say Esther. Okay, leave it right there because there's more to come. Uh, I w I want to say David, um, because he's literally my don't favorite. Don't say why. Just say who it is. But I don't I don't think <laughs> that's don't the one. That's not the one though. Oh. Um, choose quick. <laughs> he got the one. <laughs> Joseph. Okay, I like that. Go to Mine was David. Okay. It's going to be a prophet probably. <laughs> no, I would say Jael. She said it's a prophet. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So the second part of that question is, which why I didn't want you to say that part, why? What, what did they do <laughs> that was so influential about them that appeals to who you are? Um, I'll, I'll say with Joseph, with Joseph, Joseph was able. I, I kind of feel like Joseph um, sometimes, um, being one of the la being the last one, having all these brothers and things of that nature. Um, sometimes you do feel like the black sheep of the family. Like my just my experiences growing up. I was in church. I was with my mom. I was the I was that kid. You know, my brothers on the other hand weren't. So when I was like in church getting things, this that and the other, I'm not gonna necessarily say that they were jealous. Because I don't believe they were. That was, but I was kind of favored amongst th the church people or whatever. They wanted me. You know, they wanted me to sing. They wanted me to do this. Um, so I would say Joseph because Joseph, at the end of the day, he brought n he brought reformation to Egypt. Number one, and he and number two, he brought well. Number one, he brought God to 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 Egypt. And then he brought his entire family to Egypt. And, like, he was able to forgive his brothers. He was able to, uh, you know, forgive his fa family for what they did. So I think Joseph is that that my, one of my favorite influences. Plus, I like his movie, Joseph King of Dreams, by DreamWorks. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Who's Can next? Go. Go. <laughs> That's what I told you. Because, <laughs> I mean, she wasn't really, <coughs> in my opinion, Jael was just violent. That's why I like her. But if I could change my, she was, she put a whole hen pig in somebody's head. Like, come on. Um, but I would change mine to Rahab. Um, because, and I know people like, oh, but she was like in charge of the whole house. Yeah, that's influential. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I mean, but she was my favorite because she paved the way for salvation. She did. And we know that Joshua's name is Yeshua which is a derivative of Jesus' name, which means salvation. But she paved the way for him. They created that safe space for them to come through while they were going to, to do what they needed to do in the land. So I would change to Rahab. Amen. Um, for me, uh, I know you said why and as it, how it, as it relates to us. So for me, I, I just really love this, the, the story of how she kind of came from went from literally being kind of nobody to having the ear of a, of a king. And so going from just being nobody to having that big and level of influence. And for me, thinking about where I am to go, you know, I, me, a little old me from the west side in the hood or whatever, going to a place to where I'm going to be that influential in a hospital setting, almost running a department and things of that nature. So... That the that correlation is uh, why I, why I picked her. Um, for me, the story of David and Goliath has like literally been uh, something that not just being told about, but reading about it, seeing movies about it, has always stood with me. Just when I think about the things that I've personally experienced and what I have perceived 
as a Goliath, um, mm -hmm. or um, bigger than me, and, and again, just the weapon of choice that he used, uh, it just always makes me realize the power that I have, because for a very long time, um, growing up, I didn't always think I had power over a lot of the things that I've experienced, whether that being in school, uh, being outside on the block, family stuff, no matter what. Um, and, and I think for me, his weapon of choice, again, that just speaks a lot of volume to the type of weapons that I recognize that I have now um, and how I can use that to triumph over a lot of things that I've experienced or even help other people to do as well. Amen. The last part, which some of y'all kind of touched on this, that's why I'd be like, just be obedient. But y'all kind of got into it. But the last part of the question would be, what were some things that your favorite influencer had to overcome, some things that was opposing them that they had to overcome? And do you feel that you've faced some of similar challenges? Or like, how do you defer from the things that they had to endure and go through? So, no, 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 I was just going to ask, I was going to ask, um, because you said some of the other elements of the just answer this one. Yeah, um, so for me, for me, uh, I would say for Joseph, he, <coughs> I can't say he had to combat fear, because he, he just talked too much, um, but he talked too much, um, and knowing when to talk and when not to talk, when to speak and when not to speak, uh, you know, he spoke in front of the king when, when he, and, and, and knowing his talents, like he, Joseph really had a, like, yes, his, 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 his grace was dreams, but Joseph also had a gift of administration, and he had to figure that out at the end of the day. Like, okay, he knew it once he got into Potiphar's house, but then he really knew it when he became the basically the vice president of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, knowing who, like, knowing and pulling those, those gifts out on the inside. I always thought I was just supposed to be a singer. I thought I was going to be up here doing praise and worship for the rest of my life. No, I'm a whole executive pastor, y'all. Like, pastoring people, making sure, like I said, make sure bills pay, make sure this, that, and the other, and things are still running. So I, that kind of mirrors my life with Joseph. I, I, don't, I don't really know what Rahab had to overcome. I mean, she doesn't relate to me. I don't own the whole house. Um, if I did, I'd probably be a little rich, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm not even that administrative, so <laughs> that's not my grace. That's like an episode of Bad Girls Club. Uh, but uh, I don't know any adversities that she had to overcome. She just needs to be present at the right time. And I think that that's synonymous with influencers. You have to know where you're called to influence it and what time that you're called to. You can't be late to it or nothing. What would have happened if Rahab wasn't home when Joshua and the spies were trying to get there before, you know, continuing their journey? You know, she would have missed the moment. She would have missed the line being a part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. Because we know that that... Gen genealogy just goes down and down all the way to Jesus. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know any challenges she had to overcome. She just was that boss. Can know. I, can I add something to yours just to help you out? Mm -hmm. So, um, and and this is just kind of how I see how you and and Rahab can intersect. Rahab actually was the deliverer of her family, um, and seeing how you brought pretty much your whole family, like you brought the whole city out to the white nation, like. So seeing as how you were that person that was influential for your family to catapult and even launch some deliverance for them, Rahab, she struck a deal with, with the spies and with Joshua, like, okay, if I hide y'all, you got to make sure that me and my people are good and that we not going to get killed with everybody else. And so I think that that was kind of how I see you guys connect because you go to, to the Lord and you begin to reason with him on the behalf of a lot of times some of your family and saying like, God, if you can do this for them, then, you know, <laughs> I can do this on my end. So that's just how I see that it, it correlated. Amen. Um, like I was saying with, I think, well, yes, I would say that I'm not sure what, what 
well, I don't remember everything that David had to overcome, but again, just just thinking about that moment um, with Goliath and everything, um, I have had similar experiences, like I said before, where I found myself in very similar moments, <coughs> being young, um, where it was not just uh, other black men or, or gangs or things like that stood in front of me where I wasn't sure how I was going to make it out and what I was going to do. Um, I will say, and I always think about his weapon of choice at that time, I wasn't sure what mine was. Um, so that was something that I've learned as I got older. But at that age, I don't know if I recognize what my weapon was at that time. I hope that makes sense. imagine that Esther had to overcome a level of fear. So I would definitely say that's something I identify with having to, I've, I've fought fear in a lot of areas and especially in the area of my identity and, and what I'm called to do. So I would, I would say I connect with that, um, that overcoming fear so that the assignment and the goal can be accomplished. Amen. That was it. Great job, y'all. Amen. Amen. Um, well, that's it. Like I said, go get, get, give God a hand clap of praise. Um, amen. So I just want you guys to be excited. Next Saturday, we have Real Man Ken Cook. Yeah. Amen. Um, and yeah. Time to we'll eat. be ready. Time well. to eat. Time to eat. Time to eat. Uh, but with that being said, Way Nation. Uh, we're going to go ahead and dismiss out because we already did all of our announcements and offer a look at that. One more announcement that I forgot to mention earlier. Friday, we are having th this coming Friday, it's church cleanup. So the church will be open all day. Um, so as you come in, just kind of, we'll probably have a sign in sheet of your name and what you're cleaning. So we don't have to have people double back and do the same thing twice. So if you clean the bathroom, we don't want somebody to come behind you and redo it. But we'll have the time, so it, the church will be open. Pastor Murphy and I believe Prophet will be here. Um, so at any point in time, you know, just come in and we're getting our church clean um, for Real Men Can Cook when we have our guests and our visitors come and we're going to eat well. But first, we got to clean well. Amen? Amen. 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 So, Wayne Nation, go ahead and stand to your feet as we go ahead and dismiss. Uh, I don't know if we can stand up here. Amen. Um, so here we go. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We honor and bless you just for this time of teaching, oh God, of learning, oh God, of understanding. So, Father, we thank you that um, the knowledge that was given on today, oh God, will seep into the minds of the people and that they are able to take something back and be influencers in their own home. So, Father, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, you're always to keep us is my prayer. Father, take us back to homes of peace where your glory will reside with us. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And it is so. Amen. Amen. Amen.